Hello, hello, my friends. I am Cindy Ola with Sacred Garden Yoga. Welcome back to our channel. I have the beautiful Jen P. Sano here with me today. We have been friends for like forever and ever and ever. Um, and it seems like we've been friends through different um, lifetimes <laughs> because we first met, uh, I don't know, like almost 20 years ago. I mean, it was probably close to 20 years ago at this point. Uh, we started in the salsa scene. I was a salsa dancer. She was a salsa dancer. Her husband was a salsa instructor. And that's how we first uh, met each other. And then uh, just as our, you know, our lives begin to, to take different paths, it, we, we, started, we, we came back together, what, maybe about four, three or four years, three, four, five years ago. But now within this lifetime of doing this kind of work, of doing energy work and uh, doing retreats. We've done retreats together. We've written courses together. I talk to Jen um, like every week, probably at least two or three times a week because we're always bouncing ideas off of each other. And so we, we, we've just been become really good friends within that time. And I wanted to bring her on year one to say that she's also an author she is a best-selling author on Amazon, right? You want to talk a little bit more about your books? Well, sure. We're just going to jump right into that. Let's talk well, first. No, no, and we'll tell them about the books. Uh, Sacred Medicine is the last one that was out. It's called mm -hmm. Sacred Medicine, Mystical Practices for Ecstatic Living. And 25 authors came together to share their medicine and for me and um, this path that we are on together, medicine and the shamanic journey is when we've taken our old wounds and our traumas and all of the hard knocks of life and then transformed it into this beautiful healing medicine that we share with others. So that's what all the authors in this book have done is we've taken our experiences to try to make your path a little bit easier for you. And each author also shares a spiritual practice um, to help you do things at home, to get you more into the state of ecstatic living. Yes. And I'll put a link to her. You know, you'll just have to give me your links. I'll put them down in the comments. If you're interested in purchasing any of her books, I highly recommend it. So anyways, yeah. So she's been on this path for a little while. I've been on this path for a little while and we wanted to come together today and uh, talk about how, um, you know, the, the, how, the, how, as we move into this new timeline, we've been talking about this uh, for, for many months now, how uh, we're, each one of us are individually receiving this information differently. You know, we're, we're stepping into the age of Pisces, or stepping away from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius and call this the golden age. And what's happening is I feel a lot of people are receiving downloads and transmissions and are not really knowing how to take that, how to handle it, and how to process it, because it can be sometimes very overwhelming in the, the body. And Jen and I, we've written a lot of curriculum together. We, we run courses together as well. And whenever we put a course together, especially if the the entity or the deities that we're working with, the energies that we're working with are newer to us. For instance, we've put courses together on earth herself and, and the different elemental forces. Those were easier to, uh, to integrate, but earth, earth medicine usually is. And then we moved on to planetary influences. And uh, uh, yeah, we have a whole course that we run on how to use these planetary influences to expand in our own living. But anyways, if you start to decide that you're gonna teach on something, like let's say planetary influences, or you're invoking in certain goddess energy or even the archangels, you know, whatever energy that you're invoking and you decide that you're gonna teach upon that, there's something that happens when you decide that you're going to step into the role as teacher. It's almost like these, these forces, these, these big powerful forces produce these downloads inside of you so that you can integrate them better. But those downloads can also be very, woo, you know, like very overwhelming at times. And so we wanted to just get on here and talk about our experiences with that. Not that we necessarily have all the answers, but we both have experiences with that. 
so that then you can take upon that and maybe it can give you some, some clarity on how to, to manage that within yourself and within your own life when you start to receive or, or you awaken or um, these downloads start to come in to let you know that you're not going crazy, <laughs> even though you might feel that way sometimes. And uh, you know what the process is, because I think it's also unique with each individual as well. And you'll probably hear that in our conversation. So uh, Jen, I know that you, uh, when we did, uh, we also ran a course with, uh, when we were passing the Moon IQ rights. And these Moon IQ rights are also, they're, they're, they come from a shamanic tradition, but I know you received a big download from that. You wanna talk a little bit about your experience with that? Oh my goodness. I think with all of this work, I've had big, huge movement is the way that it comes through for me. It feels like movement. It takes us through energies that can be stuck or lodged that we don't even know are stuck or lodged. And it helps us through that in these beautiful ways. So for me, with that particular, with those particular rights, it came through very, very clear with the, with the sense of clairvoyance, all these visions and information came flooding in and some weird information too, right? Like, remember I, I got all this wisdom that I needed to eat garlic. <laughs> and so I, I think through this wild ride of downloads, we have to be able to lean in to trust the information that comes in, which isn't always logical. And that was probably the hardest part for me as um, a spiritual being on this shamanic journey is trusting it when it comes through instead of negotiating with it or trying to tuck it aside. I'll get to that later, but allowing it to move through me. So, and letting it come in, I think that's why they call it downloads, right? Because you let it come in. But so often I think individuals stop that process. And in my personal experience, when you try to stop it or put it off, that's when it's physically uncomfortable. But when I just receive and allow it to flow, then the information really does flow in beautifully and always with such intense purpose. So when the Munakai rights were coming in, that was, it came in right before I wrote the book for ancestral wisdom and, um, for my power of my, I'm sorry, my chapter was about ancestral power and how we claim the magic and wisdom of our ancestors instead of how so many people get tied to like the generational patterning, which is also important to clear and let go of, but it, it really came through very intentional with all of my different lifetimes and all of this magic and wisdom that I've collected throughout history, lifetime after lifetime and all the space in between. That's the information that needed to come in, but it needed this time of integration. And it put me on my butt. Like it really came in hard and fast. Um, two weeks straight, it came in and I was up every night with eyes wide open, mm -hmm. almost like espresso was pumping through my veins and I couldn't sleep. I was just constant, like letting it come in, but it was very distinct. There was a lot of instructions and, you know, every time we get a download for me anyways, they're all uniquely different. The purpose is different. The way that it comes in, the way that it integrates is different the way that um, it flows through me is different. But one thing that has always helped me is writing. So I don't know about you, but when I sit down and just let it come through and for us, like writing the courses, that was a part of that, mm -hmm. just letting it come through so that we can share that information with others. Well, yeah, especially for you, since you're an author, that's a natural, you know, a natural uh, way for it to come through through you as well. And for me, uh, yeah, I, yeah, writing definitely helps, but I'm also a mover. You know, uh, with the teaching yoga for all these years, one the thing that I must do usually is move the body in some way so that it, uh, it, 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 I give my body a chance to integrate and understanding that when you receive downloads, it still has to pass through the vessel of your body and it has to pass through your central nervous system. Uh, it has to pass through all your organs and all your circula uh, circulatory system. So it has to pass through all of the systems in your body and whatever we can do to make that easier for the body. 
some downloads, yes, they will they will come in big and strong, and and you can actually feel the impact on your central nervous system. For instance, being wide awake or or having or having these other these other kind of, of symptoms, and taking care of our bodies, I think is it's a it's a big thing that will will help uh, when it, you are receiving some of the bigger downloads. Some of them come in more easy and sweet. And those are, those, are, those are good as well. I think the sweeter and the easier that they come in, the better. <laughs> but sometimes you just don't know. They'll come in fast and hard. And when you do, well, I do want to say this, though. I don't think spirit will give us anything that we can't handle. I mean, if it's truly coming from the divine and it's coming from spirit, it's going to, uh, to serve you these downloads in a way that you can actually take it in. It might take you to the very edge of you, but I think, you know, if, it, if it's truly a, a divinely guided download, it's going to, uh, to offer it to you in a way that you can receive it. And yeah, yeah, sometimes when we're pushed to the edge physically or mentally, that also expands us and, and makes our container a little bit bigger so that the next time we receive information, we're able to contain more. And then that might push you to the edge just a little bit. And then your container gets just a little bit bigger and just a little bit bigger and just a little bit bigger so that each time you're able to receive a little bit more. But I do think that, you know, the, keeping that in mind, that if you are processing something to uh, keep in mind that you're given what you can handle and because uh, it's easy to go into the mindset like, oh, my gosh, I can't handle this. This is too much for me. This is too big for me. But I, I, I just don't believe that that's the case. Now, there are things that you, you may need to do. We're talking about just writing or journaling, taking care of your body so that you can go through it uh, easily. And like Jen said, um, not resisting it. Because when we resist and we fight it, oh boy, <laughs> then that right. can That's cause all sorts of havoc on you and on your system and on your body because you're resisting, you're pushing against yourself. And then that's, I think, where a lot of the, 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 the uncomfortable aches and pains and, and things tend to settle in in those moments of resistance as well. And I think, you know, you're talking about the body, me being an ex dancer, you being an ex dancer, and with you being in the world of yoga that body awareness, I think comes into play so beautifully in the spiritual journey, just knowing and being aware of where you're feeling it, how you're feeling it, and then responding to that as well, like allowing that. So often the downloads can come in like the, when I explained where I was just so supercharged energetically, I was going on no sleep and not tired at all. But at other times things will come in where it really requires me to rest. And, and those moments of rest is when the information and inspirations come in. Those sweeter ones, I love the sweet ones too. They're like honey, right? Sometimes it's just like information of inspiration. And I think so often people don't even realize that that is a download, but it's just these beautiful ideas and it's light and it's airy and it feels good and it's uplifting. And all of them are equally as important. And all of them, I think, help us expand through our edges in a different way. Yeah. And right now with so many downloads available to all of us, and that's the thing. I mean, it really is available to all of us. Some people will be open to receiving it. Some people may be not so ready to receiving. But if you are on your path to awakening or growing or expanding consciousness, whatever, whatever those words are, whatever that means to you, we're really living in a day and an age where it's really easy for, uh, uh, in other words, you're, you're very supported in that right now. I was having, when we were having a conversation with my friend Kai on a previous video, we were talking about how the information is coming in differently then let's say it was in the 1960s or in the 1970s, in the 1970s, because we were like the earth and collectively, I think we were in a different kind of a space. Like back then to receive awakenings, it might've been more like you had to go to a guru where you had, you know, it, it was, 
or I mean, not necessarily always to go to a guru, but it was, it didn't seem like it was so easily available. But there's much now, more support available now for sure. Like right. there's circles and support and even just the, the social media that's available for groups of people that are like-minded to be able to gather and talk about their experiences that didn't exist. Right. Exactly. In this new age of technology, even though technology has certain, you know, things that are not so great, but in one way that is that it is good is it gives us an opportunity to connect to like this. Even a couple of years ago, we wouldn't have been having this Zoom conversation and, and posting it on YouTube. I think that this is a fairly new experience within itself. And so right. I think that the universe is definitely conspiring to help us in our awakening and growth. And that it wants us to as well, like the, the powers that be, spirit, the divine, the greater beings of light, you know, want us They're They're supporting us along the way and the pulling us together in community. But even more so, I, I, you know, I almost feel like time. I don't know how you're experiencing it, Jen, but time seems to be zoom, like really fast these days. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was talking about this with one of my author friends the other day because it's both, it feels both and it feels slow to me, but at the same time, it feels turbo speed, which sounds crazy, right? The polarity of both. Like I've done, I'm working on the fifth book in one year. Like that would have never happened. It is crazy. But that's a lot I, to do in one year. In one year. But in some ways I feel like at the beginning of COVID, I slowed down in order to speed up, but in another way, the relationship to time is much yes. different than what it used to be. Like if you would have told me I was going to do five books in a year, I would have, I would have told you you're crazy. You have the wrong girl, but it's, it's happening and it just feels like it's effortless and it flows. So I think that, yes, it has like, they got this warp speed, but at the same time, it just, there's a calmness to it, which is beautiful. Yeah, definitely. My experience with time has been shifting. The things that I can do within a day, I wouldn't have ever thought that I was able to do that in the past. And, uh, and I feel okay, you know, and, and I think part of that is also working with yourself and working with your own energy so that you have more of it available to do the things that you really want to do. Because if your body is still stuck in certain trauma or holding or pushing things down, that takes a, a whole lot of your own energy and your vitality and your life force. So you don't feel like you have the, the energy or the capacity to, uh, to do the things that you need to do within a day. So, you know, I think part of that is just, um, you know, living and, uh, and, and doing the internal work, which when we do these courses together, they make us, by the way, it's like, it's almost that just doing that propels you into your, your next level of growth. So it, 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 just, it just happens that way. But yeah, so there's more, you know, you do the work, there's more energy available to you. But then besides that, yeah, the, just the way the time, it just feels so, so different. I think even aside like from Like it's that, collapsed, right? It's just mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, I feel like that too. Through going through the work, when we talk about that and what we've seen and witnessed with our students, I feel like it's because they become more aligned with who they are. So organically, they start weeding out the things that don't fit for their highest good, which creates more time and space. Yeah, exactly. And I think this is where, uh, you know, going back to the universe, universe supporting us, while we move into this new golden age, it's providing us with so many opportunities to, to like really just wake up and become more conscious, become more aware of um, just, you know, as a, a collectively, as a society, even where we've been fed misinformation and how, uh, you know, new information is coming through, like the tr more of the truth is being exposed. Uh, not just about what's going on in the world, but about who we are, you know, that, that mm -hmm. sometimes, or, you know, I feel like some of the truth about who we are hasn't necessarily been forthcoming or, you know, people or the well, past. There's or, unlearning. They haven't been forthcoming right. 
about where our true power is. You know that the, the, mm. the power is within us, and that we are we are sovereign, and we have the ability to to empower ourselves. Like that, that the, our salvation lies within within us. This is stuff that I've talked about before, but I think more of that kind of information is becoming available where people like the veils of, are lifting, the veils of darkness or the veils of confusion are starting to lift so that we can truly acknowledge um, what, uh, how big we are. And that if we start to awaken to what's true to us, in each one of us, each one of us do that, that that's what's going to make the difference collectively, not just individually, but collectively in the way we show up. I think it's always been there. It's just now people are gaining the confidence to trust it. Yeah. They're beginning to trust their authentic selves, the bigness of who they are, the divine being within, whereas there, there took some unlearning to get to those layers, but it's always been there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It has always been there. And now I think, yes, people are starting to see it and to recognize it and to want it. Like they want mm-hmm. those deeper connections now. Uh, they want to know what true fulfillment is feels like, um, what, what an enriched life actually feels like having, uh, you know, more uh, deeper personal relationships and connections, not just with people, but with nature and the planet and the environment that that is where the, the true, true joy lies. And, uh, that, we're, yeah, that we're really beginning to awaken to all those things. And we're receiving, you know, a tremendous also just amount of support and downloads from all the powers that be. And that, that's another thing that um, I wanted to brush upon real, real quick too, is how indiv- uh, individually we have connections with the different aspects, I think, of, of uh, elements of nature. Like some people might be more connected with uh, earth and uh, the elementals where other people might be more connected to galactic where, where other, uh, you know, like galactic forces and galactic beings and where other people might be connected. Animal spirits. To, yes. Yeah. To shamanic teachings mm. and that it's all good, you know, um, part of the, receiving the downloads is understanding where where you're unique and where your gifts lie and it can be different and so your experience with with all of it can be different but at the same time you're still you know you still got the support you know you got and also it grows and changes and evolves yeah so what's happening now if you allow it to continue to expand it will And there's always a door that gets us in to set us on our path back home to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think if we just keep one foot going in front of the other, you'll get exactly where you need to be. But if we can't be rigid, you Mm -hmm. know, it can't be, if if you stay rigid, you're missing, you're missing the point because there's such a wildly, um, what is the wording for that? There's just such a wild array of information that can come in many different forms in many different ways. And when we allow that in, I think it's easier to trust the wisdom that comes in because you'll get confirmation in many different ways. But if you just, if you're blocking it, that I I learned this one way, like I I tell people all the time, even in our courses that they need to trust, like we're going to give them the information, take, take what resonates in this moment and leave the rest because it's all going to have its own divine timing and the doors will open for you perfectly if you are willing to see and walk through it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then going back to things that you can do to uh, take care of yourself while you are receiving all of this information, you know, coming back to taking care of the central nervous system. I've been obsessed lately for some reason, but it's not just for some reason. It must be because it, 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 it must be information that needs to come through about taking care of ourselves physically through our central nervous system because all this energy has to pass through that. 
um, and not ignoring, like for instance, doing some of the work, doing some of your internal work to release some of the trauma that's within that can get caught up into your central nervous system will help you process the downloads. As you said, yet sometimes the downloads themselves will expose things from the past that are ready to release and know that that's, you know, that that's passing through, through all the systems in your body. Um, as far as, you know, taking, I find that minerals, taking minerals are helpful too. Another thing that, that can help you to process uh, uh, or take in the, the downloads without it feeling, especially if they're big ones, so they don't fry out your system. Yes, taking a uh, rest when you need to, and, um, and the earthy just meal. The, it's the minerals. Yes, and really acknowledging that it must pass through your body and that your body is the sacred vessel, right? We talk about that even, well, you know, you go to goddess teachings and the teachings of Mary Magdalene is that we're a chalice, that this, this body is a chalice and it's divine and everything has to pass through it and not ignoring that, that part of the process. Because I think sometimes uh, spiritual folks don't necessarily always want to take into consideration the body. You know, no, that and it's, it's coming through you. Nurturing and it needs, it, everything has to pass through this, through the mind, through the body, um, or, uh, or it won't happen, <laughs> right? No, we always say through you, for you, and of you. Like mm -hmm. it, and it, and it, and it's all of the above and connecting to spirit as below as within, but it's still coming through the sacredness and, and the priestess world. Like this is our temple. Mm -hmm. It's coming through our temple of sacredness and processing through us in divinity in the way that it is supposed to come through. And we have to trust that part. Yeah. And paying attention to the cravings that you get. For instance, when you were receiving those Munaki rights, you wanted to eat garlic. You know, it, it's like a weird thing that doesn't make any sense, but for some no, reason, it was to purify my body. Like the wisdom that came through was that you, I mean, it came through, mm -hmm. through sight and sound, but to eat it, to purify the temple, like mm -hmm. to purify the body, to purify the, the wisdom that was channeling through. And yeah, that's not something that I would go get for a midnight snack normally. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, who would, right? <laughs> right. But I ate it like a ravaged dog. So it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. And paying attention to those different cravings that you get. Sometimes you'll crave, didn't you go through a craving of Brussels sprouts where that's all you wanted to eat? for? A oh my while? gosh. Yes. I ate my weight in Brussels sprouts. But again, like when you're saying minerals, Yes. I got a huge download after I had that surgery and I, it was such an intense craving that I needed it. My physical body needed it. But at the same time I had channeled through 47,000 words in a day and a half, um, when that all happened and my body just was craving that. And I think part of that was, I was so connected and also that, that type of food is very grounding. So mm -hmm. it was, it was the both and you know, allowing myself to be so, so, so connected, allowing everything to come through me as a, as a spiritual being, but then also I'm here in the earthly realm and I needed to write it all out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, pay attention to what your body needs to the cravings and, uh, do it. Like if you get the craving for garlic, if you get a craving to eat lots and lots of vegetables, to drink lots of water, to take vitamins, know that this is your body. Your body is so deeply intelligent, trying to help you. You know, you're, this is, it's just divine wisdom coming through, trying to help you process the information so that your body can hold and contain all this beautiful wisdom that's trying to come through. You know, and not to deny it because I spent so many years wasted negotiating that information because mm -hmm. it doesn't always make rational sense. Right. Right. But soon as I was able to, to get to the point where I started trusting it more and going, okay, I'm getting this information with purpose and then go to the kitchen and do the thing or get the pen and paper and start writing or whatever it may be. It could be dancing, moving, journaling, playing music. But soon as I trust that, it makes the process so much easier and it, it makes the experience feel richer because it just flows. Yeah. Whereas when you ignore it, you're going to get more and more messages kind of pushing up against you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can get uncomfortable. 
But if we would just lean in the first time, it just makes everything so much easier. Exactly. And uh, that, um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something that was really good. And that left my brain. I got my, my, cr- <laughs> another thing that Jen and I have been talking a lot about is <laughs> we're, very, we're, I'm about to turn 40, 49. She's about to turn 49. And going through this experience at this age too, I think depending on what age you are, that that's also going to affect things, you know, going through this at 49 years old versus going through it like at 20 or 30 years old. Well, one, I don't even it's think so different. information would have been available <laughs> to me, but now as it comes through this particular body at, at 48 or 49 years old, it is, it's, it, that, that makes a difference too. And yes. uh, like I said, you'll I need think- more post-it notes and help have <laughs> yes. a good friend that can help you remember things. <laughs> oh my God. Like I said, I had this great, brilliant thing that I was going to say, and then whoop, it just left my brain. Things like that certainly happen, happen more so. But <laughs> anyways, it's, uh, I, I think though we, we needed to go through, through those earlier experiences to even uh, be able to appreciate what's coming through now. But yeah, it, it is lots of, lots of fun <laughs> going through it through the you know this age and in time and with children and all this stuff and that's a, you know that's another thing as well that we still need to process and take this these informations and these downloads while being able to to live a human life yeah you know, that was another thing that i was talking about with kai before, which I know you, you have what well, Aiden is, did he just turn nine? Nine. Yeah. Yeah. He just turned nine. And, uh, uh, and you know, you, you have your husband, you have your family. So do I piano lessons, uh, and everything else that we, we have to go through in life that, at the same time, you know, we're living life and receiving all these downloads simultaneously, but it's, um, it, it should all work together to help. That's what the, the practices help, right? Mm-hmm. Because it, our foundational practices are what make that all come together as one. And I've always believed like so many people talk about the work, like the spiritual life, the home life, to me, it's one life. Exactly. And it has to be integrated. Otherwise it feels like you're being pulled in all these different places, which creates anxiety and frustration and all the things. But if we integrate and really honor ourselves in all of those areas as one, as a whole being, that too, to me is like the sacred of the sacred. And it makes this feel more like a vessel because it's not segregated. Mm -hmm. It is whole. It's not broken apart. And it makes those downloads make more sense too. I think it does because it's multifaceted. Like Uh when things come through, it's not coming through for one tiny piece of me. Right. Right. It affects the whole. Yes. And it affects your whole life. Mm-hmm. And that's the point. These downloads are to give you a new perspective on the way you're living life, not just this one particular point of view. You know, a lot of times I think people really get caught up on one purpose. Like, what is my one purpose in life? And the, the way I see it, if you, if you have, like if there was, if you wanted to put it to one purpose, your one purpose would be get to know yourself better then all the other purposes come along from that and that your purposes will shift and that they'll change. But I think a lot of people just get caught up on, well, how is this? How are all these downloads going to help me with this one big, huge, giant purpose that you've created in your mind and in your brain when it's like, no, you're receiving it so that it can go out through, through many things, through your family, and through your relationships and, uh, and through your work. And it doesn't, and, and sometimes, yes, for a moment, you might get caught up on one big, huge purpose. You know, sometimes it will, it will certainly come in that way. But then and even that those, evolves though. Yeah, and, and then they most change, people, like those, that, and, but then yeah. that shifts and then that changes. For instance, if you're raising children, if you're a mom right now raising children, 
Maybe that's where your energy needs to go. And even if you receive big spiritual downloads, it's to help you with where you are in your life right now, not necessarily to take you completely on this different path. Although sometimes it might, I mean, sometimes that happens Mm -hmm. too, but that's not the way it always happens. And I think um, when we can understand that about ourselves and our human experience, that um, it's always, it's always going to work through us with where we are in our life right now to enhance where we are, meeting us where we are, you know, to take us to those next steps. But yeah, those purposes, they can change, they evolve. Sometimes they're grand, sometimes they're, they're smaller. And it's all, you know, it's all part of it. It's all good. Well, and I think we need to realize is how sacred we are. And sometimes that purpose might be you showing a kindness to somebody. And now that person is activated and they go do this big grand thing. Mm -hmm. And you were needed to have that go forward or through our children. Like you said, like raising a child, sharing our teachings with that child, and they may align into their sacred purpose through that and do this big, huge thing. So you never know whose lives you were touching along the way, even though I think so often we want all the answers all at once. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it happens that way. I think that it comes through and it's always in that life is constantly sharing with us our everyday purpose. And that's why Mm -hmm. we say I live in everyday ceremony. This house is my altar. This house is my sacred temple. When I move through life, I want to touch as many lives as I can. That might be complimenting somebody in the grocery store line and changing their day. Mm -hmm. And you never know how that's going to then change somebody else's. Like there's this, we're all interwoven together and one thing affects the other. So I don't think that it's fair to say there's one purpose because if we are all um, interconnected in this beautiful matrix of life, we're all living in purpose in a multifaceted way. Mm -hmm. I help you, you help me and vice versa, right? We're constantly growing and evolving together for the bigger vision. And that's one thing that we do talk a lot about in our courses and what we try to teach and emphasize is finding these magical experiences within the everyday living, within what one might call the mundane, but that that's where the sacred really lies. It, it lies within how you, you perceive things, how you perceive this, you know, an apple that you're eating or how you perceive uh, doing the dishes and doing the laundry, even though those, <laughs> those are hard <laughs> sometimes. You know, they're infinite like, for uh, sure. But, <laughs> but but still, uh, uh, but you can also do that with a place of gratitude. Yes. in the stance that oh my goodness, like I have all this clothes. Mm-hmm. Not everybody does, and the fact that I have and I'm able to give from my abundance and share and and pass things forward to other families that may need it. That's a, a different way of looking at the laundry right? That I, that I have so much and how lucky I am for that, Mm -hmm. you know, or we have running water, not everybody has running water. And it kind of goes back to our childhood, but you know, not every kid has this or that, but there is, when you take it um, and look at it in a spiritual way, there is so much wealth to that. Mm -hmm. Just realizing and being grateful for what we have, even if it is a chore, you know, like Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful I have a roof over my head and I have clothes to wash and dishes to wash and food, you know, to put away or what have you. It's Mm -hmm. just a beautiful, the different way of looking at things when you take those everyday tasks and everyday chores and really open into the experience of having, right. Instead of, you know, just, I have these beautiful things and I get to do this. Mm -hmm. Instead of, I have to do this, I get to do this. Mm -hmm. And serving, you know, I think showing up in a way that's serving to other people, that that is also part of the the great mystery. You know, like these these mysteries that we talk about, they come back to some of those, the most basic and simple things. Basic thing, be a good person. That is it. (laughs) Come Come back to yourself and start being a good person to yourself, for yourself and to other people. Yeah. And really that does open up amazing miracles Mm -hmm. and movement in life. Just these, I mean, things just appear and happen and do just when you start paying attention. 
Yeah. And, you know, we have such vivid imaginations as a, a human being that sometimes when we, we come into these moments in time where you, you do feel a shift in the timeline, that our, our brain becomes very imaginative and it gets to the sense of everything that we have to do needs to be grandiose. And unless it's that, we're not contributing. And I think that, you know, just going back to just old lessons, like she said, none of the um, in, enlightenment or ascension or whatever you want to call it, because these are big words too, right? Kundalini awakenings. These are big words that sound very mystical and magical. And they are. I mean, sometimes you can really experience it and get in these altered states and all this stuff, but that, that's not really all what it's about. It comes back to these teachings that have been available to us from the very beginning, from the get-go. Like, you know, it, the way I see it, none of that has really shifted or changed, you know, like the way to enrichment and to fulfillment, to, to awakening, the path is still the same as it was thousands and thousands of years ago. Like I said, it just may be more available to us, but I think sometimes we get caught up with this big imagination that it's somehow bigger than no, I think there's more available you know I mean? to us, but there's also more distractions in the way. Mm -hmm. So in some ways we've made, it's, it's much more attainable for people. And in other ways, you, if you don't get rid of the distractions, then it's a little bit harder to get to it because right. we put other things first. Right. But, but yeah, the path is the same. It's coming back home to yourself, mm -hmm. building community, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we, all we can do is, is do, do our part in that and to answer what is the call today? What is my call today? When you wake up in the morning, well, how, how can I serve today? And, and that's the steps, you know, those are the steps that will take you to wherever you need to go, whether it is a big grand thing, which it could be, or if it's a smaller thing, but the, they're all good and relevant no matter what. And I think that's an important thing to get through is that sometimes our ego gets attached to unless it's this big grand thing, then it's not enough or I'm not doing enough. But if you wake up each day, you know, how can I serve? And you, you take in the information, you know, you receive the downloads and you're present, yeah, you're present with them, you're present with how you're supposed to show up with them, that you will, you know, you'll be guided through, but it's, it's an everyday moment, you know, it's an everyday. And sometimes, yes, yeah, it can build up to one big thing, or it can build up to, you know, creating an empire. But if you're not creating an empire, you're still making a difference. And even to create the empire or not create the empire, you still got to do the little things every day to get there. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't just go from here to there. It doesn't happen that way. So every right. day you do need to take that in and listen. And those little steps are massive. All of my most um, crazy wild things that have happened that are so good. They happen from that trust, that little thing called this person, which didn't make sense that led to the contract for the CD mm -hmm. or say yes to this book led to four or five more books. And, you know, but it's things that took me to stop negotiating with the information that came through. Mm -hmm. And that is something that has come with age for me. Most definitely is when I was young, I would negotiate, ah, that doesn't make sense. And I wouldn't trust myself as much. Mm -hmm. And now if I get that wisdom, it may be to call somebody I haven't talked to in five years mm -hmm. and I just do it. I don't hesitate. I do it right at that moment. I trust, I trust it. I trust it. I follow it. And that might be the purpose of that day, that right. one call, that one text, that one thing. So yes, yes, yes. When every day, not even every morning, just all throughout the day, I'm like, what's my next best step, right? Which is my, how do I serve? What's yes. next? Tell me what's next mm -hmm. and allowing that to come in. And for me, that has simplified things because when I think about the grand vision, it's so big right. and I know what that is for me. But if I focus on just 
the grand vision, it can almost step me dead in my tracks because it's so big. It's like, where do you start? Right. But if you listen to that one little voice, that next little thing and that next little thing, it's so much easier to get to the bigger vision mm-hmm. without being overwhelmed of like, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to do that? Am I really supposed to do that? Am I good enough to do that? But if I go little by little, little by little, you get there. Yeah, absolutely. That's it, baby. <laughs> And my country accent just came out. <laughs> uh, Marietta just came out. It sure did. <laughs> um, anyways, I think we could probably wrap it up. Is there any other final thing that you want to say or express before we no, I think, wrap I, things up? I think that's a great place to end. I, I like it. I, I think that that is the message I'd like to leave everybody with is just from this point forward, listen to that next best step and trust it. You got to trust it. Yeah. And again, you can get through this. I made a video yesterday talking about, you know, talking about ancestral wisdom, how we have inherited within us. Uh, this, is, this is the gifts that our ancestors gave us is the tenacity to live through this life on this earth plane. And we have the, the capacity to do this. We have the capacity to do big things. We have the capacity to do whatever we want to do. It's in us. It's like, it's in our body. It's in our blood. And uh, to remember that when you forget, we all forget sometimes. And, but that's also why, why we're here is, you know, we're all here just guiding each other home, helping each other when we, when we forget. So that's right. thank, thank you, you for being here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.